current conversation is that by all means do your free SHS. But why are you doing boarding? Why are you doing lodging? And why on earth are you feeding day students? Three questions that are being asked. Intelligent questions, I must say. You want to do free SHS. Okay, go ahead and do it. It's a great policy. IMF has said it's, a, it's an innovative policy. IMF this is a good policy. They didn't say it's great. They said it's innovative. It is innovative because nobody thought that a day school like Aquinas must have a dining hall to give students lunch. That's innovative. Nobody thought that. Let us spend the state's money to feed students. Nobody's going to give us a kickback for that. It's not a road construction. It's not a hospital that you, I call my contractor and say, contractor, how much? No, it's not that. It is giving, are the headmasters going to come back to the minister and give him a kickback? Or the caterers who are cooking him for the, are they going to give the president a kickback? So this is a noble policy where a politician is not going to benefit. He is giving the state's money to the young people. What did Jesus Christ say? He said, bring the young people to me. For it is, it is with these that the kingdom of God belongs. Any politician who is thinking about the young people, thinking about the next generation. Politicians are in the castle and they deal with big people. They deal with high profile people. They deal with big contractors, big journalists, big judges, big that. A politician who sits in the castle and thinks about the guy in Kamu who is nine years old. That's a true politician. That's a Ghanaian politician. That's the Ghanaian spirit. And Akufado says, I'll do free SHS. And he goes beyond that. He says, okay, what about the day schools? What are we going to do for them? And he said, ah, but you're doing your free SHS. What is what about this? He said, no, 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 I want to do something about day schools. He said, but what do you want to do about day schools? He said, why don't you feed them? He said, hey, do you know what feeding? They don't even have dining hall. He said, we will build it. I mean, you, I, don't you want to applaud this? They told him that the day schools don't have dining hall. Now, this is a president who didn't go to secondary school in Ghana. He was so privileged that his father sent him to Lansing College. He didn't go to Accra Academy. He didn't go to Presec. He didn't go to Achimota. He didn't go nowhere. His father was a big man. He was a learned chief justice. He sent his son to Lansing College. The boy from Lansing College comes and says, I will feed the children from Gumpurgu Yoyo. That's politician. The people who grow up in Gumpugu Yoyo become politicians and they turn their back on them. The guy who went to Lansing College comes back and says, I'm interested in the poor Ghanaian child. He must go to school. Not just go to school. Put him in presec. So at the beginning of free SHS, I got a lot of calls. Somebody says, ah, my child got IG 13. He didn't get into presec. Somebody got 21. He got to presec. I said, oh, but how is that possible? He said, hey, Mr. Paul, we don't like this thing Akufado is doing. You get I said, wait, wait, wait. So I went to Napo, the minister. I said, Minister, I really need to see you. He said, what is it? I told, he said, come to my office. So I went to his office. I said, Chief, how does somebody get grade, I get 10? He doesn't get presec. Somebody gets 21, he gets into presec. How does that happen? He said, it is the policy of the president that we have to set aside some of these good schools for the underprivileged. So go and check. The person you are saying got I get 21 and got presec, go and look at the circumstances. He's coming from some remote village where there's no light. And we are finding those people and putting them in presec to be with the dad about children so they can grow together and establish social cohesion. If you don't do boarding, how are you going to get that? If you're not doing boarding, how are you going to get that? If we think that we don't need social cohesion and because of the difficulties that free SH is, is, is experiencing, we should throw the baby away with the bathwater. Let's do that. But I will not support that. President Akufado will not support that because the future of our country belongs to those children. Those children with no fathers. Those children with no mothers. Those children with poor fathers. Those children with poor mothers. The boy from Lansing College with a rich father and a rich mother is thinking about them. The politicians from there have ignored them for years of the Fourth Republic. The politicians from Bunkubu Yoyo, from Kwamu, from Ejusu, from the villages, they have ignored the children there. The boy from Lansing College in England says, I will look after them. And you criticize this policy? Because they said the rice came and there was maggots in it. Because when they cooked the food, the egg on it was something. Because the oil on it was I've seen all of those videos. I've seen, I've seen them. But you have to get into the psyche of the future. You have to at least read your Bible and see what God expects of us to do for children. They are underprivileged. Blessed are those. Haven't you seen it? Okay, let's do the practical thing. Today, free SHS is, is, uh, is implemented in a different way. No boarding and lodging. Let's look at analysis. 
Did, did I have a, a, a Addis Adel first? Okay, so I have, um, I'm, I'm tempted to start with Presec, but they will tell me that I'm being biased. So let me start with one of the inferior schools, Addis Adel. <laughs> Uh, Addis, Adel, Addis Adel is the most inferior school that I can think about. You know, Addis School. <laughs> Addis Adel College is one of the great schools in Ghana. It's in Cape Coast. Okay, so today, Akufado announces a policy. Free SHS continues without boarding. Listen, oh, without boarding. And all of us have been to secondary boarding schools. I've been to preset. People have been everywhere. So imagine that, without boarding. Addis Adel, free SHS, tuition only, no boarding. Angel Carbonu says boarding and, and feeding is not part of education. I'm not sure about that. Boarding and feeding is not part of education. Now, why do they say that? They say that in England, it is day schools. Nobody's doing boarding free at secondary school. In America, it's day schools. Nobody's doing boarding. It's true. We've heard that. Now, let's look at the details. Okay, so today you stop Addis Adel, boarding. The guy in the boarding school in Addis Adel, who cannot... Um, afford to come to Addis Adel every day because you're not paying boarding school fees anymore. So the guy who cannot afford the boarding school fees walks out and he's a day student. That's what it means. So he lives in Pram Pram. He's in Addis Adel. You have stopped free SHS. He cannot pay boarding. He goes back to Pram Pram. He will not be able to go to Addis Adel from Pram Pram. Let's now go to Presec and make it clearer. Okay, so Presec is here. It's in Accra, so it makes it easier. Okay. Now, guy in Presec, and I, I can tell you about over 50% of the people in Presec cannot afford the boarding if the boarding is struck down today. The argument is made that look for those who cannot afford. By the time you finish looking for 100% of them cannot afford it. You know the kind of country we live in. You know the economic situation we live in. You know how people have a lot of children. So this issue about let's try and have some system to check parents who want to pay. Parents who think that they want to pay. The government has created a fund. It is sitting at the Ministry of Finance. Just go and pay into the fund. What, what else do you want us to do? You are a parent. Ken Oferata says he can pay. He's Minister of Finance. He says he doesn't understand why his child should go to Achimota and he's not responsible for paying. So he, is, he has created a fund. The fund is sitting there. It is at the Ministry of Finance. You are a parent. You can pay. Your child is in a disadvantage. You give your child more private food to go to school. You give your child nice clothes to go to school. Then you can also go and pay to the fund. What else should we say? Okay. So let's take Presec for an example. So the guy is in Presec, okay? He lives at Prapram uh, is far. Let's, let's put him in Latabi or Manprobi, okay? He lives in Manprobi. He cannot afford boarding fees. You brought a new policy that means you're no longer paying for boarding, you're only paying for tuition. So you're paying for day, day for everybody. Okay, the boarding people should pay. You want boarding, you pay. You don't want, you want day. He's going to commute from Manprobi every day to Presec. Remember, the reason why the day schools work in London and in America is that the social housing policy there is different. A lot of these people are coming from compound. Now I've lived in a compound house before. I've also lived in a bungalow before, so I can speak for both worlds, okay? In the compound house, they use lanterns. Some people don't have lights. The guy is going to Presec. He's going, he's going to take two trotters to get to Presec in the morning. He's going to be washing his mother's stuff and doing work at home in Manprobi. He's going to commit two trotters to get to Presec. He's going to come back to Manprobi. He doesn't have a desk at home. He doesn't have light at home. Presec boarding provides all that. President Akufado wants to pay for all that. A lot of people will tell you that they only learned how to wear a tie when they went to infant spam. Or they only learned how to use cutlery when they went to Presec or St. Augustine's. Because their home where they were coming from does not help them to understand how to use cutlery. The home where they were coming from does not help them to understand how to use many facilities and even to dress up, to wear a bow tie, to wear a flying tie. They didn't know how to do it. They needed to go to Presec to be taught how to do it because in Presec it's part of the culture that on Sunday you wear a flying tie. And we say keep them at home. In the homes that literally cannot keep their academic environment, the guy is going to write Wasi. He's in a compound house, seven children in one room. And you say he should go home because the rice is coming and uh, since COVID, the schools are not being able to so cancel it. And he should go home. He, he can't even come to Presec every day. He doesn't have the transportation to do so. The parents have transportation for him once a term to take him to Presec and leave him there. Akufado will do the rest. That's what they are used to. And now we say they should stop it. They should stop the boarding. It's not part of it. Have you considered the Ghanaian, you know, demographics? The big story is if we can, can we, do we have the will to do it? We must have the will. If we have the will, there will be a way to do it. It's not politics. It's about the future of our children. 
1.2 million people as of 2020 had been um, uh, educated by free SHS, boarding, fed, lodged. Some of them are in Canada in medical school. Some of them are all over the country. I told you I'm preparing a documentary to show how many of our free SHS people, especially the underprivileged, have blown the wasi and have gone abroad and are in scholarships today. They are going to be changing their communities. And the boarding and lodging was fundamental to their success. Because you have, from Presec, if I'm in Engman House, I go to Engman House, it's nice, I go to the dining hall, and I go to the, um, I, I go to the classroom, there's lights, I can learn. If I'm living in a compound house in, in uh, Kujo Sadi, that's not going to happen. And a lot of our people are like that. We need to move them out with education. Because when he gets educated, he has opportunities. He's probably not going back to Kujo Sardin. He'll bring his brother along. And that's how we develop society. We've been talking about overpopulation. The only panacea to overpopulation is not advocacy. The panacea to overpopulation is not advocacy. It is education. Agri said many years ago that when you educate a, 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 a girl, you educate a nation. The girls who are having children are 14, 15, 16. 80% of them, it is because they lack education. So the panacea to overpopulation is not advocacy. It is education. Educate them in the boarding schools. If we can, Ghanaians, if we can, let's keep this policy as it is. After 20 years, we can decide to review it. When the housing has become better, everybody has air conditioned, the roads are beautiful, the ramshackle trotters have been cleared off the road, and we have the London Red buses over there. We have the American school buses on our streets. We will get there. But we will get there with the force that we need to educate today. They will take us there. Without them, we will not have the force like South Korea, like Japan, to be able to get there. And our situation is peculiar. Let us not be tempted by beautiful arguments, intellectually sounding arguments, and say, throw the baby away with the bathwater. Stop the body, stop the Lord, stop, stop, stop. Just to feel that we are opposing governments. Okay, let's oppose. Yeah, if we have to oppose government, no problem about that. But this is more sensitive than opposing government. Let me come over to you, Mikhail. You went to Presec as a day student. I did, I did. So where were you staying? I lived at Malam. You lived at Malam and yes, you please. went every day to Legon Medina. Yes, please. How long did it take you to get there? It took about an hour with like regular traffic. And then uh, what time did you arrive at Presec? So I woke up at 5 a.m., did a few things. By 6, I had to be out. So about 7, 7, 10, I was at school for assembly. And what time did the school end? At the time, I don't know what it is now, but at the time, I think school ended around 3.30 p.m. And you went back to Malam? Yes, please. When you went home, what were some of the things you did? Um, so I'd rest for a bit, uh, maybe watch a bit of TV, had to make sure the house was in order, then... I had to do a bit of studying also. Did you eat when you got home? Yes. <laughs> Who gave you the food? Yes, please. Um, so my dad arranged for that. Your father arranged for the food? Yes, please. Did you have a room to yourself? Yes, I had my own room in the house, so I could easily do some studying there. Did you have a table in the room? There was a table there. You had a fan there? There was a standing fan at the time. Nice bed? Yes, please. Okay. So you had Mikael. <laughs> That's the circumstances. How many people? If, people, if all of us have the circumstances, yes, by all means, let's do day schools. But it's not all, it's not some of the people. I mean, they are seven in a, they have one room, two parents, sometimes one parent, six boys. He's coming from Presec with Trotro. His mother cannot even afford a daily. He's not, going to, he's not going to afford. Who gave you money every day to go to school, Mikael? Uh, it was my father. Did he give it to you every day or per week or per month? So he worked at in the eastern region so he gave me my money per week so he gave you the money for a week yes please. for what transport and eating at presec yes please at manguase yes please yes, exactly. <laughs> okay yeah. we we understand that don't worry about it yeah. the people yeah. don't understand yes okay so there's a place at presec it's, it's stood the test of time manguase was there before i went there it's still there he went and left it's still there manguase is the place where we eat at presec okay so you, you have to buy food some people don't even have that money so when we talk about this uh, free SHS thing and uh, they say that let us stop the free SHS and all that, I mean, I'm not so sure about it. Not so sure. I'm actually not so sure about it. That's, a, that's the end of my conversation. I hope people are ten sending texts and expressing their opinion. This is not about politics. This is about the future of our country, which, is, which we should be passionate about. The future of our country is what we should be passionate about. We cannot continue to admire Sweden, Norway, America, England. Da, da, da. We cannot continue to do that. We have to begin to be passionate. And we have to have politicians who are not just thinking about themselves all the time. Every human being thinks about themselves. I think about myself. Maslow said the self-preservation is the first order. That's what Maslow said. 
That's his first, those of you who have done so sociology and anthropology, you know what I'm talking about. He said first preservation is first, so everybody thinks about themselves. But let's have politicians who have the inkling that even if they went to Eton, they went to Harvard, or they went to Lansing College, when they become leaders of a developing country, they will understand what the developing country needs. They will know that it's different from Lansing College. And let us encourage those of our politicians who grow up here, that when they get there, they shouldn't turn their back to the children there. Mohamed Chambas, the famous Ghanaian, continues to talk about how he came to infant swim school from Bimbila and how that could never have been possible without a government policy. See what Chambas has become. He was a small boy in Bimbila. He didn't know Cape Coast. But the government policy deposited him in a fan swim school. Today he's a high profile uh, officer of the United Nations. Not just that, but Chambas has brought a lot of people out of Bimbila. One Chambas brings out a lot of people out of Bimbila. And when you saw Chambas, those of us who saw him as a minister, you will not even believe that the guy grew up in Bimbila. You will not believe it because infant spam was all over his body. Because he went to infant spam not by his might, not by his parents' might, by a government policy. That's what governments are there for, to create policy that creates opportunity for people. It's not people who shout slogans that mean nothing. It is people who say, I will do free SHS, and people say it's not possible. Sometimes I look at Jinnan Opokwajiban and I smile. These are the people who said free SHS is not possible. They said it's not possible. It is not doable. You can't do it. They, they said it so many times, and it was being done. And then they say, we told them to review it. They see, they see now the thing is not working. We told them they should review. You sat there, you couldn't do it. You said it's not. You told the child in Bukubu Yojo that it's not possible for me to use taxpayers' money to educate you. It's not possible for me to use taxpayers' money to send you to Wesley Girls. You can never go to Wesley Girls. Wesley Girls belongs to the people who are not like you. That's what you told them. You said it's not possible. Today, they are going to Wesley Girls. And you look at them and you say, I, I think they should review the policy and stop the body. You shouldn't even talk about it. You shouldn't say anything about it. Allow civil society to talk. You shouldn't say anything about it. When you told Ghanaians that it's not possible to rescue the dying child, and the man from Lansing College, the chief justice's son, comes and says, I will rescue the boy from the village so that he can become like me. That's Lansing College. You were, you were right here. You can't rescue the children in your neighborhood, in your backyard. The guy from Lansing College comes and says, I'll rescue them. I mean, do you, and, you, and you are concerned about it? I mean, I don't understand. Maybe I'm wrong, but I'm sure that I'm not wrong. Let's go to the text messages and see whether people agree with me or not.